Hi, I'm Laura Schreiner. I work for The Step-In Company. We're based in Northfield, Illinois. And today I'm going to be talking about low K-factor spray foam for insulation of cryogenic fuel tanks. Brief agenda, I'm gonna talk about who Step-In is, give a little overview on polyurethanes, talk about blowing agents, cryogenic insulation development, and finally, the development of our new product, Step-In Foam S180. Step-In Company was founded in 1932, and last year we did over $1.4 billion in sales. We're a leading producer of aromatic polyester polyols and anionic surfactants. We have 15 production facilities worldwide. We are traded publicly, and you can find us at www.stepin.com. We are a global company. Our specialty foams area, which is where we develop these products for insulation, are made just south of Chicago, in Joliet, Illinois, and also in Poland. Just a little bit of history about the specialty foams area. We've been a supplier to the aerospace industry for over 40 years. Our customers include North America's largest aerospace contractors, and we are in end-use applications such as propeller blades, unmanned aerial vehicles, antennas, and a wide variety of composites and structures. We've supplied insulation foams to the U.S. space program for over 30 years. Primarily, we've been involved in cryogenic insulation for the space program, and we started out with the Gemini program many years ago, developing CFC-11 foams, which you may remember as Freon. Then those were replaced with HCFCs, which are hydrochlorofluorocarbons, and that's because of the Montreal Protocol. They had to be phased out. And lastly, we've, we've recently developed third generation products because of further EPA regulations. I'd like to talk a little bit about the polyurethane foam reaction. This is a polymerization reaction and it involves reacting two components, one being an isocyanate, mixing it with a polyol component, which forms the polymer, which is the urethane. In tandem with that reaction, there's also a blowing reaction, and this is what causes the foam to expand and rise. In the blowing reaction, there are two ways this can be done. One is mechanically using a low boiling point blowing agent, such as a hydrochlorofluorocarbon, a hydrofluorocarbon, or a pentane. What happens in this reaction is that the low boiling point liquid gets heated up because that urethane reaction is exothermic and the blowing agent expands and causes the foam to rise. This can also be done chemically with water. Water reacts with isocyanate forming carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide expands and fills the cells also causing the foam to expand. I'm gonna show you a brief video. We take a polyol and an isocyanate mix it together, then a bunch of cells form, the foam expands, this is the blowing agent filling the cells, that causes the foam to expand and fill the part, and the cells fill with the blowing agent, which also helps the insulation. This is just a chart that shows several different blowing agents and shows their thermal conductivity. The thermal conductivity is indicative of the insulating ability. The lower the thermal conductivity, the better the insulation. So CFC-11, that blowing agent that got phased out several years ago, has a very low number. It has the best insulating ability. That was replaced with HCFC-141B and a couple of other blowing agents as well. And, and you see that many of the blowing agents get worse in terms of insulating value. Um, as, as we go, go through. Carbon dioxide and air are, are by far the worst insulators. In terms of contribution to foam thermal conductivity, the blowing agent is an enormous contributor. Over 50% of a foam's thermal conductivity is contributed by the foam. So the better the K factor of your insulating gas, the better your insulating ability will be. But also, there are components from the thermal conductivity of the polymer itself, so that solid portion, 
So a urethane in general will have a specific K factor, but also the cell size. The smaller the cells and the more cells that are in your foam, the better the thermal conductivity will be. The relative environmental impact of, of the different blowing agents is listed on this chart. And I know it's hard to see, but what's important to note is that CFC11 has a one on the ozone depleting scale. And on this scale, we've made a CFC11 the worst. It was replaced with HCFC141B, which is third from the bottom, which is a 0.11. That was then also banned by the EPA for use in the US and has been replaced by several different blowing agents. In the product that we've developed, HFC245FA has replaced it and that has a zero as far as ozone depletion goes. In the realm of cryogenics, some of the common cryogenic fuels that we're looking at insulating the tanks for are liquid oxygen, liquid hydrogen, and liquefied natural gas. The applications include spacecraft, unmanned aerial vehicles, and some others. We're seeing some hydrogen being used in automotive applications, and also aircraft. This is just an illustration of the applications. We've got the external fuel tank of the space shuttle on the top left. Also satellite launch, private launch, unmanned aerial vehicles, and automotive. Commonly used materials for cryogenic insulation include aerogels, layered composite insulation, polyurethane foam, perlite powder, cellular glass foam, and cork. It's important to note that polyurethane foam has the lowest density of all of these materials. It's two to three pounds per cubic foot. This leads us into the development of our new Next generation blowing agent product, Step in Foam S180. S180 uses, uses HFC 245FA as the blowing agent. It meets all of the current EPA environmental guidelines. It is non-ozone depleting. It provides optimum insulation value for a given weight at both ambient and cryogenic temperatures. This is ideal for applications where fuel tank weight must be minimized, so where you want to maximize your payload. This material is spray applied. It easily encapsulates pipes and fittings and can cover complex geometries. It has a wide processing window. It will, it will go on the substrate at relatively low temperatures, 25 degrees Celsius. It's also durable through that cryogenic temperature cycling. I just wanted to put a slide up to illustrate what spray foam processing looks like. So, when processing a spray foam, we're using equipment that's plural component equipment, and it's metered and then mixed through a spray gun and sprayed onto the substrate. It reacts very quickly. This is some of the data for our newest product, and these are the strength properties at 2.7 pounds per cubic foot in place. What's important to note is that the, the tensile strength properties and compressive strength properties all get better as the colder the temperature gets. So the foam's becoming more rigid and also that gas is condensing and the properties are improving. The thermal conductivity of the foam at a variety of mean plate temperatures, um, this measures the, the thermal conductivity of the foam. You have an apparatus where you have one plate at one temperature and another plate at another temperature. So there's a differential, and then it measures the rate of, of heat flow through, through the foam. These numbers are very comparable to the old CFC11 foams. And I'm gonna toggle over real quick. If you remember this slide, CFC11 was by far the best thermal conductivity of all of the blowing agents. This, this foam is using H, HFC 245FA, which is, it's, it's not nearly as good as the CFC 11. However, because the product has been formulated to have a very fine cell structure, it's giving numbers that are very comparable to the old, the old product. 
Also, the tensile adhesion to an aluminum lithium substrate is 75 PSI at ambient temperature and 60 PSI at minus 365 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're still getting very good adhesion numbers at those lower cryogenic temperatures. If you'd like to contact us about, about this product, you can see us at booth 4089 for additional information on Steppenfoam S180, or you can contact Jay Harris, John Hamburger, or myself. Thank you for attending, and if anyone has any questions, please feel free to ask.